Hello everyone, welcome to the 10th day in the Python 30 series. In this video, we are going to talk about building custom exception classes in Python. Now I'm assuming you have already watched my previous two videos on the topic of Python exceptions. In the first video, we talked about handling Python exceptions using try, accept, else and finally keywords. In the second video, we discussed specific exception classes that are built in in Python and how to use them in your code and include multiple exception classes in your accept blocks. Now, if you haven't watched those videos, make sure to watch them. Link is in the description below and then come back and watch how to build your own custom exception class because that will give you an idea of how Python exception works and how you can improve your code by adding custom exception classes for better readability. At the end of this video, I'm also going to ask you a multiple choice question. If you are able to answer it, that means you paid attention during this video. So let's get started and talk about custom exception classes. Look at this exception hierarchy in Python documentation. These are the list of all the built-in exception classes that you can find with Python. Obviously, the question arises, aren't these classes enough? Do you need a custom exception class to deal with errors in your Python code? Well, it's a valid question. And if I'm completely honest with you, most of the times I also end up using these built-in exception classes rather than using my own custom exception class. But there are times when you realize the importance of a custom exception class. Let's talk about that after we have learned how to build a custom exception class. That way, the advantages and disadvantages of a custom exception class will be more clear for you. Let's look at this piece of code. I have variable x that stores a list. Within the try block, I am asking the user for an input to guess a position. I am converting it into an integer. And then I am printing out the index for the list. All right. Now, there is a good chance the user does not know how many elements are there in the list. So I'm catching an index error. So I'm saying except exception is E. If E dot class dot name is equal to equal to index error, then print you're only allowed to guess between minus one into length X and length of X minus one. Makes sense, right? Because for positive indexing, it will go from zero, one, two, three. So length of X minus one is the maximum index that can happen for this list. And for negative indexing, it will go from minus 1 here to minus 4 here. So that is minus 1 into length of x. So let's go ahead and run this. Guess a position. Let me guess 10. So you are only allowed to guess between minus 4 and 3. Now, what if someone decides to put a float here? So let's run it again. And now guess a position. Let me say 3.5. And then it says invalid literal for int with base 10 3.5. Basically, it came here. So print E. So it was not an index error. It was a different kind of error. You can confirm that by using E dot class. Let's run this again. And I can say 3.5 here. And then it says class value error. So we are not catching value error here. And that's why it's only printing out this. Well, this is a very simple error. So maybe there's a chance people will understand it. But with complicated errors, it becomes more and more difficult for people to understand the error. That's where custom messages like this print statement really comes into help. So let's go ahead and cover this value error in our accept block as well. So here I will say e.class.name. Let me copy this value error. You are only allowed integers. All right. Let's go ahead and run this again. Let me put 3.5 and then it says you're only allowed integers. So this is a better custom message compared to the previous one. But even in this small code, and remember, this is a very small code. You can see that this print statements here and here, they're taking up too much space. And if the complexity of your code increases and you keep adding more and more error handling to your accept blocks, these kind of print statements are really going to reduce the readability of your code. Well, what we can do is we can increase the atomicity of this code. We can move this print statement to a custom exception block and we call that exception block only when a certain error happens. Let me show you how. 
so here i'm going to say class my index error and then i'm going to pass in exception as the base class so basically my index error takes from this exception class i'm going to define an init method and as one of the parameters i'm going to pass in the length and then here i will say self dot message equal to let me copy this entire thing and i will move it here and then basically i'm going to change this part where it says length of x instead of length of s i'm going to say length because i will pass in the length of x directly in the class and here also length all right and then let's define a string method so we can print out uh, our message so i will say return self dot message all right so now we have a specific custom error class that deals with a specific kind of index error and gives us a custom message so here instead of a print statement what i'm going to do is message is equal to my index error so if there is an index error exception i'm going to call my index error class and i'm going to pass in the length of x all right and then i'm going to print out the message so let's go ahead now the print statement is gone all we have is a class call so this definitely improves the readability of your code and when you have complicated code having custom exception classes will really help you manage the atomicity of your code so basically one block of code only does one thing at a time so now if i run this guess a position and i'm going to say 10 and it says you're only allowed to guess between -4 and 3 basically this message came from here so this is how it improves the readability of your code basically you can have custom messages predefined for your specific project and it will help you to have a better understanding of what kind of error is happening rather than a generic error message like invalid string literal you know now this is not done we have we still have a value error here and we are printing the print message from inside the except block only so why don't you take this as an assignment tell me how would you build your custom value error class and use it in your except block put it down in the comment section and i'm going to let you know if you did it the right way now in the previous problem we were trying to integrate a custom exception class into a very generic problem when you are working on a project when you have very specific requirement that's where custom exception classes really have an advantage so for example instead of using the python list data type i have created my own list data type which is only integer allowed list so basically a list that can only store integers as you can see this is the class my integer allowed list and then in the init function i am declaring an empty list i have a function add items where i am checking the instance of the object that i am passing in to append to my list if the instance is not integer then i am just returning doing nothing else what i am doing is i am appending that x variable to my list and this is the method to get the list after i have appended all right now if you are confused about this class don't worry this class is present in the blog the link to the blog is in the description below so go ahead and check it at your own pace all right now here i am calling that my integer allowed list i am adding items 23 adding items pylen in and then i am printing x dot get list all right let's go ahead and do this and you can see the list takes in 23 but it does not take in pylen in why because of this code right here basically it is not an integer and therefore it is rejecting it now it does work but in my opinion it's not very obvious for a programmer who has not written the code for instance if someone is trying to append a string or a float ideally they should see an exception saying only integers allowed so let's go ahead and do that first what i'm going to do here is write my own exception class so i'm say custom type error because you know it's a type error sort of uh, an exception only integers allowed no string float allowed i will use the exception class as the base class i will pass in the variable x where x is the data type of the value passed and i'll say self dot data type 
equal to x and then I'm going to define a string method and here I'm going to say return let's use an f string self dot data type not allowed only use integers all right so this is the exception message that I am going to uh, show any user who tries to append anything other than an integer to my integer allowed list all right so here instead of return what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise custom type error and I'm going to pass in type of X all right so let's go ahead and do this so let's run this code I'm adding uh, items 23 then adding items pile in let's run this and here you see is a custom type error class string not allowed only use integers so basically someone who is working on python libraries or someone who is working on specific projects custom exception classes allow them to implement specific custom messages or specific custom exceptions into their code that way people who are using their code or project or libraries can look at their custom error message and know what their specific code is trying to do. So this brings us to the most obvious question that we discussed before. Why do you need custom exception classes? Well, as we saw from our code before, number one, it enhances code readability. Having print statements here and there can really mess up your code. What you can do is you can move those print statements to a custom exception class and call those exception classes when an exception occurs that way your code stays atomic it looks crystal clear and you can have your customized print statements saved in a class that can be used other places as well that's the whole objective of python isn't it number two it allows project specific exception handling when you're working on a specific project that has specific requirements you want to have custom exception classes that way people who are involved in your project can read custom exception messages that are suited only for that specific project that way there is a better understanding among your colleagues and your users so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial about custom exception classes this brings me to the mcq of the day look at this code user input equal to int of input enter a number all right what error will be raised if user enters a float is it a type error or a value error think about it what kind of error it is going to generate and put them down in the comments below i'll be answering each of your comments and also providing supporting materials so thank you guys i will see you in the next video